Hi, I'm Ross Burbeck. I'm a barrister and a founder of Casido. And today I thought I would talk you through how to build a, an e-bundle in Casido um, and just show you how that process works. So a simple overview of, of how and how easy it is uh, to build a e-bundle in Casido. Um, this should only take about five minutes, um, which will, will hopefully be a revelation to you about how easily this often torturous process can be. So let's go, set the, set the clocks running. Um, here's the bundle I, I made earlier, but and you can see you can see what it looks like. We, we've got uh, a small bundle here, but what the, the starting point for bundling Casido is to create a new case file. Um, and that's um, simply um, a matter of choosing somewhere on your file system you want to save it. Um, and uh, creating a new blank case file. So here we are, an empty Casido project, a shell into which we're going to build a bundle. Step two is to find the files you want to build. So I obviously have to have um, some to hand. Let's take uh, these to start with and bring those files into Casido. So that's just a matter of selecting the files you, that you want to bundle. And here they appear down here in uh, my desk space. The desk space is where new files appear. Um, and the first thing we're going to want to do, obviously, is, is find out what these files are and rename them. Um, so this first one is an old index. I'm going to ignore that because I don't want it. Next, we have a notice of appeal. So I'm just going to double click on the names of these files um, and uh, give them a name. I can just scroll through them and name them. And my naming convention is to date uh, and then put the parties. Um, uh, because that's correspondence. And you can see here, I've got two, I've got some correspondence here. And if I go through, I've got, I'm going to find I've got more correspondence. So um, as I name these, I'm probably going to want to start um, organizing them. Uh, so let's take these two and move them up into a bundle proper and create a folder called correspondence. And that's that middle button, the folder button there. Um, and this is going to be one section of our bundle. And if I want to name those wrongs, I'm going to name, rename that, keep, keep, keep this uh, naming convention tidy. My notice of appeal, let's create a second folder for core documents. Um, and let's put that one at the top um, and pop that file into it. We've got the skeleton argument down here, I'll pop that in there as well. Um, maybe that would be in a separate file or uh, whatever, but here it is. Um, and I can jump back to these files. That's our old index. Um, yeah, I could name that old. Um, and uh, we can name these last two here. Uh, um, um, and the last one is... 3rd of June 16. And obviously you want to get these names as tidy and, and uh, as tight as you can so that they they are, are easy to identify and are going to look nice on the paper contents and, and when you take a judge to them. Um, one of the things you often see in bundles that people get wrong is that is they don't ensure the documents are all in the right order. It's very important. Um, to have things in chronological order in bundles. Judges like the context that brings us as true of authorities and legislation as it is of, of um, correspondence like this or, or any documents or any evidence we may do put it in um, chronological order. So drag, drag and drop those files into the right place. Um, let's uh, now add, the, you know, that's not very many files, but this is only a demo, so that, that, there we are. Um, I'm, let's now add a table of contents just to just to get started. That's this button here, and that adds a table of contents to the desk space. If you'll see, if you look at it, it only shows this old file in the desk space. That's because you can see the table of contents respond to where you put them. Um, if I put it up here in the main um, bundle and regenerate it, it will give me my whole bundle. If I were to put it into a correspondence folder and regenerate it, it will just give me my correspondence. So, but in this case, obviously, I'm going to want to put that at the top. Um, and I'll leave it to the table of contents and to regenerate it. There we go. Um, I can, I, I might want to, uh, the next thing I'm going to want to do is turn on pagination, because obviously I want this paginated in Casino. That's as simple as clicking on the button down here. And you'll see that immediately. Um, do that again. 
add to page numbers, the bottom right hand corner of every document, page one, etc. And if I regenerate my table of contents, there we go. Um, that might be sufficient uh, in some cases, but we can do a bit better. Um, one thing I like to do, for example, is to add a, um, a uh, bundle cover page. So I have one I hit that looks like this that I prepared in Word and, and I would modify them for my particular bundle. Let's put that at the top of my bundle. Um, the next thing I might want to do, but looking at that, now I've added that and regenerating my table. You see, this is now page one, this document. I don't want that to be page one. So I'm going to right click it and choose not to paginate that document. So it takes the page number off, gives me a little dash there to tell me it's not paginated. And if I regenerate, my table of contents is back to looking as it should. And the other thing I would want to change in this for an e-bundle certainly is to make sure that this page number here, page which is now page one, is actually um, what it says it is. And you'll notice, that, of course, that it's not page one. It's the third page in this bundle. And if I export this bundle to PDF, this page one is going to be page three, which is not what we want. That will confuse a judge when you tell them to go to page 53 and they end up at, at page 51. So to change that, we're going to go to the edit menu and change our uh, pagination start page to three um, and regenerate our table of contents. And now our first document is page three. So here we go. This is a core combined bundle. That was even, even shorter than I hoped. I'm going to add a few more documents just to show you some of the other things you can do. Um, um, find um, what we need. Let's, let's add some case law, say, um, and some legislation. I do tax my things, so I do with a lot of legislation. Again, you can just, you want to add to this bundle, you just import some new files. You don't need to do it all at once. And let's create an authorities folder. Um, and then let's create some subfolders, cases and legislation. Um, and we'll put those inside to show you how you can structure your bundle with subfolders. Um, and we'll load all of this up here. Um, obviously, it's not all. And put those in there. That's great. Um, and if we regenerate our table of contents, you'll see we've now got uh, this window's been sitting on you, so I'm going to the right there. But there we go. We can look at the documents at the same time, obviously, as looking at our table of contents. This is the legislation that we want. Um, and we can make sure we name these cases properly. I often find I, I do things um, like, for example, copy and paste uh, the names of documents into, uh, you can select the text. Um, you know, we could want to put that, for example, into the name, but it's already been in my name, so I, I'm not going to change that now. But there we go. And you can see on my table of contents, I've got my three sections, but I don't currently have my legislation and case law showing there on my table of contents. Um, at the top right, you'll see these three little dots, and I can choose um, to add, I can add annotations, but the e-bundling, that's rarely necessary. Um, uh, if I, the bottom one is subfolders, so I can now show um, my subfolders within the section, and that, and that gives some context to what we're looking at there and make this table of contents easier to navigate. Um, other things we can do when building a bundle, we might, for example, you know, here I've got 150 pages of stamp duty legislation. I might not want it all. If I don't, um, between every two pages of the Casido project, um, there is this button here on the right, which is the split document button. If I option, if I if I click that, it will give me the option to split this document in two at this point. Now let's do that, and you'll see over here in the table of content, it just splits off into another document. So I could now remove that back in my desk space if I don't want it. I could rename it and put it somewhere else in my bundle. Um, and that's quite useful if you if, if you sort of look at reviewing your bundle and realize you don't need every page. Equally, um, we can do things with those, those three little dots again in the top right hand corner of the document. We can choose to rotate pages or delete individual pages. Um, so, so that gives us some flexibility for making sure um, that works. We've also got, if you right click a document, you've got um, these rotation options too in the right click menu. You'll notice we've also got pagination options. So we can choose, I showed you the do not paginate before. We've got also a paginate as an insert option. Rarer that that's needed now in the days of e-bundles, but if I wanted to ensure that um, you know, this document was 
not messing up the pagination because it was added late, I can choose the paginators and insert and you'll see I get the numbers there. Um, but um, yeah, there we go. And there's really not much more to it than that. Um, very simple, very quick, very flexible. The last thing you're going to want to do is export it to a PDF, um, which you do by clicking that export button down in the bottom left. And this gives you some options for, for how to export it. Generally, you're going to want to leave all bookmarks on. Um, I also quite fond of this option to include page numbers in the bookmarks, which um, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and then uh, this last option is good if you, if you are printing and you are needing to do it double sided, it will put, if you click turn it on, it will put blank pages in the right place so documents don't start on the back of other documents. Um, and then clicking export is as simple as that and it doesn't take very long. Um, it will start off slowly, but there we go. Um, and that's ready to go. And what it looks like is going to, what it's going to look, look like is this. Here it is in Acrobat um, loaded up. And you can see we've got a nice bookmark tree on the left here. And we've got a nice table of contents that is indexed. Um, everything is searchable and the really page numbers line up. So if I go to page 14 here, that should be page 14 there. Um, so there we go. As simple as that. I hope that was instructive. Um, do uh, let me know if you've got any questions at all. Uh, and thank you for watching. See you next time.